All right, welcome everybody to this very important event. Uh, we have the honor and pleasure of having Adam Gottlieb, who is going to perform Under the Viaduct for us. Take it away, Adam. Thank you so much, Hesu. Thank you all so much for having me. It really is an honor to offer music at a gathering like this uh, among um, union comrades and brothers, sisters, kin, relatives, and... Um, I am offering a song that I wrote in 2017. It's a, in the form of a, a blues or a modified blues. And lyrically, it's inspired by um, the Psalms, for those familiar with the Jewish and Christian scriptural traditions, you may recognize some lines and images. Um, I'm an artist and musician primarily. I've done a lot of activism over the years and I you know, wrote this in 2017 as just part of kind of the work of documenting the struggles of the folks at the community that was at the time called Uptown Tent City, um, who had a confrontation with the city of Chicago in the summer of 2017, um, right around the time of as the Jewish High Holy Days were beginning. And um, that's what inspired me to write this song. It's called Under the Viaduct. And there's the lyrics in the chat. Under the viaduct By the waters of uptown That's where we sat down And we remembered Zion Under the viaduct where we pitched our tents And our tormentors said we had the right to die Oh, oh my lord, how shall we sing your song in this foreign land? Well, I saw my neighbors there By the waters of uptown Intensity, intensity in their righteous eyes as they stared them cops down. I saw my neighbors there, yeah. All faiths and all skin tones, yeah. When the city kicked them out, they were singing, This land belongs to you and me. Oh, oh how good and pleasant that would be if only that would be. Oh, oh. Viaduct. I saw the revolution Men and women fighting for each other And the right to be human Under the viaduct, yeah Where we laid our best press Where we laid our Where we laid our heads on concrete beds Restless nights laying away Praying for little friends Oh my lord but don't delay, let us come home Oh, let us come home yeah. oh, oh. Oh. That was oh man, Adam. That was beautiful. Oh, I'm, I'm a number you. one fan. So in case you didn't realize that, um, that was gorgeous. Y'all feel free to unmute and clap for that. That that was amazing. So um, let me spotlight myself. For those of you who come late, we are recording. If you want to fix your camera or change your name, um, appreciate if you would indicate which pronouns are. So my name is Hesu Estrada. I, I know a lot of you. A lot of you know me. I am the community student hold on i can get this right the community student labor outreach coordinator chair that's it i got it Woo! i have a bit soup but essentially it's it's uh doing work like this promoting the basic needs of people fighting for, for political um you know power as well not just through the legislative work but 
to this committee. And so this is a critical issue. Uh, I'll give you just some experiences. Most of you know, Chicago is effing cold. And so a couple years ago, when there was a blizzard, I had the honor through Adam's work and others to house people in hotels when it got below zero. Uh, we had the honor and the privilege of being able to take hot meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you know what I was thinking this whole time is one, that's not going to solve the problem of homelessness, good as the intentions were and are, you know, um, necessary, right? But what struck me is that there's all these empty lots. There's all these empty buildings that could house people. Why not? You know, why is it that the the, the Department of Housing doesn't give more than a handful of, 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 of houses of that? Why is it that former Lori Lightfoot was selling CHA property to build high schools for you know, selective enrollment. To me, it doesn't make sense because there's an abundance. We could fix buildings to house families. There is absolutely no reason why people can't have homes, you know. Um, and, and the other thing I think about as a college professor, uh, I was doing the math, I've been in higher ed for 27 years. <clears throat> I know I, I look very, very young. My birthday's tomorrow. <clears throat> but um, the thing that struck me, e even from, from teaching at Washington State and now here in the city colleges since 2004, you know, there are so many students every semester that are food insecure, that are surfing uh, couches, that don't have a home, students that are in shelter. And 99% of the time, the students that are in shelters don't finish the class, no matter how long I extend deadlines, no matter you know how many chances, because they need a home, they need that security, they need that space to be able to study, to do their homework you know, and things like that. So bring Chicago home, I mean, the work it could do could alleviate so much of these problems. Again, it's not, you know, going to be the end all, but this is definitely a step in the right direction. It is something that I hope you all will support. And uh, with that, um, I'm going to step on over to mi presidente, uh, Tony Johnston of the Cook County College Teachers Union. And as soon as I find you, brother, I'm going to I'm going to spotlight you. Hold up, hold up. I do I do this for a living. I can do this. I'm tech savvy. You know, I'm going to just search for you. Hold up, hold up. Well, that's all right. I'll, I'll start while you do that. Um, uh, welcome, everyone. And we really thank you for taking time to be part of this town hall. Mm -hmm. um, Local 1600 has um, has endorsed uh, Bring Chicago Home as a policy. And um, we are committed to uh, making sure it happens. Um, Myron, our, our guest speaker, is going to speak um, much in much more detail and with much more expertise than I could about what what Bring Chicago Home is about and what it means for us as residents of Chicago. But uh, as president of Local 1600, I can just say that um, I'm proud that our our union has supported this initiative, um, and um, we, as as Hazu very eloquently said our members see this issue um, very clearly uh, when, they're, when their own uh, students are struggling with housing insecurity. Um, and uh, a student cannot be successful unless they have secure housing um, or their parents. So um, this is something that's very uh, important for us um, and so uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And again, thank you for being here. And we look forward not only to learning more about this, but um, after the presentation to let you know what you can do to be part of this. Go ahead, Hazu. I, I swear I do this. I swear. I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't teach via Zoom anymore. So I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little rusty, but wanted to just briefly introduce Myron, who is going to testify and really speak to why why Bring Chicago Home is so critical and it's so important that we um, support it and vote for it come uh, March, I believe, 19th. So Byron, take it away, brother. Welcome. Think of her Washington. I almost said her Washington. Think of this as your second home. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Hesu. And, and thank you, everyone, for having me tonight. I want to introduce myself. My name is Myron Bird. I am with Chicago College for the Homeless and part of the Bring Chicago Home campaign. And I want to tell you a little bit about myself and how I experienced homelessness. Uh, I experienced a homelessness in 2010. Uh, I was 
uh, born to a single mom of 10 children. So uh, the other eight left home. So it was me and my sister. And our, early, our childhood, early childhood was pretty good. Uh, when it got to high school, I was into what you call peer pressure, but I call it rebellion. And then listen, hung with the wrong crowd. And I remember coming home from school, my mom said, you know, I know you want to finish school and all, but can you, um, can you, either you want to stick with school or you want to, you know, or do the latter, want to drop out, you know, and work because we got a letter saying that we was getting kicked off of welfare. And that started me to go on to work. And that was at the age of 16, all the way up to uh, 39. And when I was helping taking care of my mother within that time as well, and then I went through some health issues from 39 to 44 after going to the hospital, being diagnosed and everything. And then uh, with two uh, hips that needed to be replaced. And from there, I want to go deep dive into my personal, but I don't want to sit on here and cry on everyone about this because it will be getting too, too deep on this here. But I'm going to fast forward a little bit into 2010 when I was house sitting for my sister on the south side of Chicago and coming back to the west side, taking care of my mom as well as I was working. And the last time I spoke with my mom because she was getting sick and come to find out, uh, of 2010 that uh my mom had a stroke on thanksgiving um uh, we took turns three shifts came to december 18th is when she passed of 2010 then i didn't have no place to go remind you i said i lived house sitting on my system 47 and coming back to uh her house so after all of the funeral and everything, come back to the house and find out that lights was off, the heat was off, and I had a little battery lamp and everything. And, you know, and to finally realize that I was homeless, it was cold in there and everything. And my niece came and, you know, came over, knocked on the door, told me, Uncle, come live with us. And I wind up from there living in SRO and then from there uh, joining up with the coalition. And now I'm doing good for myself right now. So I'm living in Albany Park and I am uh, mar happily married, be one year next month on the 4th. And I wanted to let you guys know, you know, the very good importance of bringing Chicago home. We took this fight to City Hall now for five years. Four years, we went through Pure D. Hill with two of the mayors. And the fifth one became a charm with Mayor Brandon Johnson. And Bring Chicago Home, I'm going to tell you what Bring Chicago Home is about. And, it is, and Bring Chicago Home is a proposal. You know, the impact of this will be life-changing for many Chicago families. I'm going to give you a teeny bit of background of, of homelessness of where we stand right now. It's more than 68,000 people to exact 68,411 Chicagoans that are experiencing homelessness in the course of a year. And 65% of them are living doubled up in the city of Chicago. So... You're looking at this like 65% is is doubled up. You know, you're living in a friend's home, family member, girlfriend, you know, home, but you're not on the lease. So this is what people have to uh, learn and get educated on because I didn't even know it was this many when I first joined. And 
when I, a good mentor, fellow brother of uh, CCH, uh, Keith Freeman came up with Bring Chicago Home amongst us with a lot of other uh, grassroots leaders sat down at that table for like five hours, coming up with the name, coming up with the, the strategies and, and, and everything to put this in place. So when we finally came to, to BCH, which is Bring Chicago Home, and Bring Chicago Home is a campaign, a campaign to create dedicated funding in Chicago to address homelessness and provide housing. And how can we do, how will we do this? We're doing this by changing the city's real estate transfer tax or the RIT. It's, and the real estate transfer tax is a one-time tax. And just to hear from me, it's not a property tax. It's not. It's a one-time tax. And it's only on those properties that are sold or sold over a million dollars or more. So it's like, you know, when you look at this the, the, the tax. Before then, it was just a straight structure. Now it's a three-tier structure. So those that's a million or more, they're going to get that one-time tax on them. Those that are under a million, a million dollars or under, will not see no tax. So the tax will only be 7% of home sales will see an increase. 93% of home buyers will see a decrease in this tax this tax would generate at least an estimated hundred million dollars plus annually to address homelessness. And the funds will be spent primarily on permanent housing and supportive services. So what would it take to win? In order to make bring Chicago home a reality, we need Chicago voters to vote yes to our question on the ballot on March 19th. We got to reach tens and thousands of voters for that to happen. The city council can't raise the tax unless voters vote yes. So in order to do this, we need you to get involved, ask family and friends, canvas, we phone bank, and like I said, we is going to be knocking on doors and making phone calls and hosting events like this one and to reach our neighbors and other voters. So I've been in this for six years now. I haven't fought the hard fight and I didn't went and raised a lot of hell at city city hall on this. I'm emotional about it. I'm passionate about it. I was among that 68,000 that was homeless. Now I'd say to myself that now I'm good. I want them to be good. So I'm going to fight this until the wheels fall off. This is why I'm here tonight talking with you good looking people on here to thank you for having me on here. And I want y'all to help me and help CCH, Chicago Coalition for the Homeless to bring Chicago home. My name is Myron Burr. That's my story. And thank you for listening. Woo -woo. Myron, thank you. That that was a beautiful, beautiful testimony. Um, and really speaking truth to power, brother. I, I loved it. Love, love getting to know you. So we're going to take a, what I call a brain break. Uh, we're going to have Comrade Adam sing another song. And while he's doing that, let's meditate on the information we learned uh, think about questions, how we want to engage, and not just Myron, but all of us together. And so hang on, Bernita, not yet. We're going to sing a song first, but I see you, sister. You have stack. And I'll explain how we're going to do the order of calls to people to speak. Go, go ahead, Adam. Okay, I guess another song. Thank you so much, Myron, for that uh, testimony. What a powerful way to start off this conversation. And with that intention that Hesu just said, um, hopefully we can... Uh, take in Myron's story and meditate on it um, before our conversation. Uh, this is a, 
as good a song for that as any, I guess. Um, some words in English, some words in Spanish, and then one um, rap verse uh, telling the story of Rise Up Town when a coalition of us um, on the north side um, uh, occupied or set up camp um, in the land that uh, was sold from Weiss Community Memorial Hospital in Uptown to a national developer to build yet another luxury housing high-rise um, in the vastly gentrifying neighborhood. Um, and so this is dedicated to everyone who's been in this struggle, going through it like Myron and, and fighting on the front lines uh, for all these years. This is uh, Libera Jubilee, Rise Up Town. And the vision from Paris to Chiapas No rents, no walls, no borders or fences We don't need cops to the best defenses The freedom to meet our needs Health, food, housing, all power to the people come through We out here Rise up town Rise up
tierra, libra mi gente, libra las niñas, libera la mente, libra la tierra, libra mi gente, libra las niñas, libera la mente. Damn, that was beautiful, Adam. I love that song. Thank you. Um, just, just amazing. I'm, I'm Adam's biggest fan. I'm just gonna call it. Um, yeah, that was gorgeous. And and if I mean, it's cool if you that was in your album, um, Kingers. I own all your albums, and I can't think. You can you can pitch it real quick. I don't. You're think good. You I'll, I'll put some info in the chat. Orale, orale. Orale. Super, thank you, super thank you, thank you. Uh, and oh my gosh, I love the gender neutral pronouns. I caught that. I'm like, orale, right on, brother. That was sweet. All right, so welcome for those of you who just joined. My name again is Cecil Estrella, and I'll be your MC. Uh, again, now is the time for question and answers. If you're shy, you don't want to ask, go ahead and post it in the chat. Juan and I are elevated. And I forgot to mention somebody really important because I got in the moment about my feels and how passionate I am about making sure everybody has a home. Um, so I want to just quickly introduce, uh, just super quick, Lisa. I'm going to spotlight you, sister. And Lisa is our key organizer who is also on the fundraising committee and she's been a pleasure to work with um just super fast not gonna say too much you know because we got a lot of things to talk about but um here we go lisa if you want to just say hi real quick hi lisa pintada vertner i'm so glad to be here i'm excited to get to know Jesu and the whole team over there um and um yeah i i'm just helping with the you know coordinating um bringing in organizations and folks uh, to spread the word. Um, this is a uh, super popular once people know about it. So it's really just about people having, you know, having the opportunity to learn what it is, um, ask questions. Um, and we're pretty optimistic about how this is going to turn out, but want to be able to, you know, make sure folks understand what it's really about, answer any questions and clear up any confusions because there's you know the the opposition is putting out some misinformation so I definitely want to take this time to dispel any myths or you know false facts so happy to take questions wonderful thank you thank you so much all right so we're going to open it up and uh, I'm also going to spotlight Byron and anybody else uh, if you want to be spotlighted let me know but if anybody has any questions Go ahead and speak up. If you don't mind if I spotlight you when you ask, I'd be happy to do that. But um, Ryan, I'll put you on the spot, literally. Any Anybody have questions? I mean, uh, what, whatever you want to, to talk about. Uh, hey, so is, is the exact wording of the uh, what we're going to be voting on available so we can uh, show people what it says and so many times uh, the wording of these uh, propositions is critical in terms of them passing because sometimes the only time a person thinks about it is in that voting booth and how it sounds to them. So um, is, the, is the wording out there yet? I'm assuming that the ordinance is somewhere on a legislative website. Uh, Lisa, do you know where we can find the whole ordinance or Myron? Or yeah. Let me grab it. I have it. Let me, I'll grab it and pop it in the chat. Excellent. Excellent. So I see uh, Howard is on stack, so you can call stack in the chat or, you know, um, Howard, go ahead. Go ahead, comrade. Let me uh, spot. Yeah, I, I really, I really uh, agree with the previous speaker. I think it's super important that people show us exactly what the wording is, because that's what uh, the, the, the real estate capitalists are going to be distorting. So we all really need to be good about exactly what this proposition says. Uh, the other thing is uh, certainly house parties and phone banking is great, but the most important thing is whoever can go door to door has got to do it on their block, um, in their neighborhoods, and wherever. It's the door to door thing that's going to win this. Uh, it's not going to be phone banking primarily uh, because people are not going to be answering the phones. Uh, you know, they get a call from people they don't know. Uh, most people now are not going to pick up. So it's good for people who can't go out but the rest of us need to go out in our own blocks, in our own neighborhoods. Yeah, that's a word. I, I do both, to to be honest. I do texting. I find it's very, very effective. I found it very effective during the Johnson campaign. Um, I see you, Tony, but uh, first, uh, Morgan has a question. 
She asked, can you give us the myths that need dispelling so we can prepare a counter argument? Excellent. And I see you, Tony, on stack. Uh, anybody else who wants to call it? And then Julie also has a question after that. So um, anybody want to answer that? What are some of the myths that the opposition are putting out there? I can answer a couple of them. Uh, one of them is that this is not a a, a one-time tax. This is a, a a full property tax. That's one of the dispelled myths, myths that's out there, and that's the myth that that's trying to scare folks, you know, to not vote for uh bring Chicago home. But you have to look at it. This is not a real this is not a a property tax because you're looking at it we want to use the uh rent on account it's a one-time tax you gotta look at it where you got developers that's developing all over in the city of chicago these properties are a are million dollars or more 10 and 20 million dollars to build but they not paying their fair share not at all so the thing of it is, is that what we're trying to do on this is, hey, if the citizens of Chicago, we keep getting taxed by the city, they're trying to be dispelled on this, on, on, on the homelessness, and the realtors are not paying their share. Why they can't pay their part and let's help fund this. You know, $100 million a year, you know, hey, you got to look at what they're building and what they're making up off those properties as well. So, and then you have another myth. It's like, well, if you pass bring Chicago home, then your rent's going to go up. Your properties is going to go up. No, like I said before, any properties that's one, $1 million or more is going to see that one-time tax. Any properties that's under a million is not going to see a tax at all. So we're trying to dispel those myths. And this is why we want folks to go out and vote yes, so we can bring Chicago home. And let's help end this homelessness in the city of Chicago. Amen. And so, um, Tony, I see you, brother. I spotlighted you. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, just wanted to respond to Howard's uh, comment is the um, obviously you can go to the Bring Chicago Home um, website and there are opportunities for you to do canvassing um, in, in uh, either your neighborhood or someplace that's close by for 1600 uh, members and anybody who's an educator um, uh, Graciela Guzman, who's running for the uh, 20th uh, Senate District of, of Illinois, um, is not only a great candidate, but she is very much an advocate of Bring Chicago Home. And whenever her, um, her people are canvassing, um, they are also canvassing not just for her, but for Bring Chicago Home. And uh, there will be an educators for Graciela uh, canvassing on February 17th, Saturday. I believe it starts at 11. I'm not sure. Um, uh, okay, Troy is nodding his head. Good. I got my information right. Um, and that's just one example of where you can not only come out to help one of our endorsed candidates that we desperately want to get elected, uh, Graciela, but also to canvas on, on part of um, Bring Chicago Home. Excellent. And, you know, I got to say that as somebody who, I love canvassing. Don't ever repeat that outside these these four walls. It's fun when you go with a partner. I've canvassed on the 25th ward, my own ward, which is not easy. I live in the 11th and it's very conservative, but, you know, I've enjoyed teaming up. It's not daunting. And I love talking to people, you know, obviously, as you can tell by how shy I am running this thing. But it's, it's very also beautiful because if you want to take political power, if you want candidates that are going to represent our interests, our class interests, we need to elect people like Graciela Guzman. And, you know, um, 
it, door knocking makes a difference. Talking one-on-one -on -one to people makes a difference. You know, uh, I, I tend to be one of those people that talks at the grocery store, talks to people at church, campuses, phone banks, you name it. Um, so, so don't be shy. And any amount that you can contribute in terms of your time is, is really invaluable. So, so really think about volunteering. Um, yeah, Myron says he lives on the 3400 block. So we have a question in the chat by Henry who, um, hold up, I can find it. Ba basically he, he is asking, he says, one bit of BCH disinformation I have heard from the opposition is that there is no actual plan for how the money that is generated by this transfer tax will be spent figures. Uh, where can I get information on the plan for this money? Excellent question. I can uh, address that. So um, I put in the chat the actual ordinance so you can read it. Um, you can share it with anybody. It's also you can search. And um, you can search in the uh, city council. Uh, they have it there on their website. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the wording of the ordinance dictates what the money can be used for so it's not just money that the city will have that they get to do anything with it's they're bound to use it as was intended and the oversight will be a community council like a community board that will oversee the the execution of the funds and making sure it goes to um it's, it's basically a wrap around it's not just like some affordable housing that will be built it's making sure people are housed so that might mean rental assistance that might mean um you know social services because there's lots of reasons folks um uh you know don't have a home and there are lots of people at risk of being homeless so there's like many services that the money is going to be used for um, it's outlined in the ordinance and there will be the oversight board that will be made up of community members, you know, various folks who are in um, like organizations and, and um, so there'll be that accountability, but you can kind of read it. There's also, if you go to the website, um, I find the page with the media is interesting to look at because there's some interviews and some um, kind of back and forth, a little bit like debates that you can see the opponents and like what they're saying about it. And you can kind of see how people rebut those things. Um, so I don't know if that answers the question, but anybody else can add as well. Yeah, and uh, comrades, if it's okay, I'm gonna leave you three spotlighted with myself. Um, somebody just asked privately, what does it mean to be on stack? You're like stacking the chips so you're next to speak. If you wanna speak, you can call stack or you can raise your hand and uh, Juan and I will take care of you. Anybody else want to chime in on this question of how the money is going to be used? Hey, I got to tell you on a personal note, I don't normally get subjective, but we had an opportunity when the fair tax was going through legislation and we were defeated by by the rich. Here's, here's our second round, brothers and sisters. We Rocky Balboa this and we pushed it through because it could make such a huge difference. You know, um, I'm excited. I think we can win it, and and again, it's not going to be a full solution, but it's a start. It's a much necessary start, you know, um, to to really provide real homes, actual homes with dignity, you know. Uh, Julie, I see you. Do you want to be spotlighted, or you want to speak your question and unmute? Not in that order, but go ahead, Julie. So, quick comment. I thought that the fair tax would go would be passed quickly because it made so much sense. But I think, unfortunately, a lot of people are missiled by, you know, quick talking points. And my fear is if you say, read the ordinance, people don't do that. And when you strike up a conversation in the grocery store or wherever you happen to be, you need some quick points. It's one time. Do you live in a house that costs a million dollars or you're planning to buy one soon? Oh, okay, then it's not gonna come out of your pocket. I'm wondering, and I'd be willing to be involved if others were too, to read the ordinance and develop quick, bold talking points that would appeal to everybody. And I think we want to be careful about not preaching to the converted, but yeah. John Q. Public, you know, the guy at the gas station. 
kind of stuff. So I'm willing if other people wanted to work on developing talking points, I'm happy to be involved. I, I'm done with that, Julie. In fact, um, I was going to take it a step further. I have a TikTok channel with my pets. And I think it would be beautiful if the students that are actively involved in this could speak to the youth to vote because they are a huge voting block that is, you know, I understand. I understand why they're hesitant to vote, but to just urge them to, to, to you know, to vote if they can. Um, I, I think that you write quick talking points, maybe even a little quarter card. I'd be happy to develop that. Uh, short videos. I was planning on using some of this information, cutting it into a short to dispel a lot of the BS because, you know, once things start to pick up via social media, a lot of times it can be very beneficial. You know what I mean? But I, I'd be totally, I just left my email there. And, you know, my number's on 24 seven, but I, I would volunteer and I'm sure the staff would be happy to get on. Um, so then Ellen, oh, okay, let me let me go in order. So I got Ellen, then Daniel, and then, I mean, Don, and then uh, Danielle, Danielle. So um, uh, Ellen, did you want to speak a question? Or chat it. Or Juan, if you know what the question yeah, is. Yeah, hi, hi, this is Ellen. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, I assume that the money would it be spent partially on like subsidized housing or increased developments um that are subsidized. Because you know, it's rent is so expensive nowadays. All right, did you get that, everybody? Go ahead, Lisa. I see you shaking or nodding your head. <laughs> so the money is going to go to to a multitude of services. It will um, the money will um, mostly be passed through to other organizations, and that work will be expanded. So it will be rental assistance. It could be um, more more housing. Um, it's the goal is that people have homes ultimately. So there's only the the money is only able to be used for very specific um aspects of like congregate shelter so that's where people are kind of housed in a group um because the this is about giving people dignified housing mm -hmm. and so um the only month the only way that they could use this for congregate shelters is just like some upgrades so that that they can make that a little more dignified um but ultimately, the goal is to um, provide services, so social services, um, and you know, thinking in terms of like the wraparound services that help people either who are at risk of losing their home. So that could be, you know, legal. It could be um, counseling. It could be financial. And then for folks who are unhoused, creating um, you know more affordable housing and support so those folks can move into and maintain because we don't want them to like you know only be able to to be in there for six months and then you know things get wobbly and then they're back out on the street so the support is required for folks to be able to maintain in a home and so um so yeah so it's you know basically those three things some new buildings rental subsidies and supportive services are like the three main categories one thing that the good doctor, we were at a, a house party in Beverly on Monday, which was amazing. And one of the points that the speaker there made is that I, I think people have a fear that this money is just going to go back to like CHA and other, uh, you know, organizations that have not done a good job. But it, it's going to be very much community run is my understanding. Isn't that right, Lisa? Yes. So the there will be an oversight board made up of like community members, representatives of different organizations. And yeah. the goal is to make sure that the money is going to the most effective so that, and also, you know, they might try something and it doesn't work. You know, they, they it's gonna be able to be flexible and adapt to what is effective. So I know um, folks are, you know, kind of distrustworthy of giving more money to the government, but this is the, the, the safeguards and the organizations that helped write this are One North Side, Chicago Coalition for the Homeless, we're really thoughtful in trying to put the safeguards around it so that the money can't just be spent wherever. And also that as we move forward, there's a board that can supervise and make sure that things are going according to the plan and that they're really being effective. So if they're not being effective, 
they can switch gears, redirect. Um, so that's kind of part of the safeguards that they put in place. That sounds amazing. I mean, because oh, I could go on, but I won't. Uh, Julie, I see you. I right, let's definitely connect and start working on that. Um, so Don has a question. Don Radke, our uh, president of the retiree chapter, wants to know how many alders of the fifty uh, are supporting uh, Bring Chicago Home. I do not know that number. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Troy, um, comrade, do you know? No, I don't have a roll call, but you know it's splitting along the lines you can imagine uh, between our progressives and non-progressives, and there's I'm sure there's some folks in the middle, but um, I do not. All right, uh, Tony, do you have a comment? Yeah, uh, I don't have the number uh, because this is just happening now, but I mean essentially. This had to pass the city council to get on the ballot. So there was, um, we we can find that vote to see who voted to put it on the ballot. Um, the one thing that I would recommend is, um, if you're not sure where your alderman stands on this, is to give them give the office a call uh, because we want to engage our aldermen, especially ones that are not. Uh, in favor or are um, on the fence. So um, I would recommend anybody to to call their alderman's office and find out where they stand on this. One little piece of information is there are some folks who are either on the fence or who don't want to be seen supporting something that's too progressive necessarily and so some of those folks are just not voting and that's how partially it got passed with the city council so they're just stepping out during the vote or whatever being absent so um so even among some of the folks who are less progressive they understand how important this is and they don't want to stand in the way they also don't want their constituents to look at them cross-eyed so um because the thing is like there's no plan B for this. I know folks get critical about the details and like, are they, we don't trust the government and we can't give them any more money, but there's no alternative. It's not this or something else. It's this or back to the drawing board. And, you know, we're way behind other states in providing funding for this kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, housing is so expensive in Chicago and we're, we're, this is just catch up, you know, this, the cost of living is going to keep keep increasing, and so, um, so yeah. So those are some of the some of the points you can try to get across. And Lisa, to about. that to that point, I mean, I I know you said you were going to talk very little about. It. I think this is important. Lou, I see you, comrade. Um, one of the things that we were talking about on Monday was how much Los Angeles and New York spend on their homeless population and the pittance that Chicago. I mean, and I'm thinking about the millions of dollars that go to victims of police brutality, you know, and, and squandered. Um, ugh. But but could you maybe briefly talk about the comparison between New York and how much we spend here in Chicago? Do you remember that? It was like those. I mean, you can, you can look up the but it, it was ridiculous. You know, I'm talking like compared to New York, we're maybe spending fifty three million dollars, whereas New York is spending way more on L.A., way more than that. And granted, California does have a progressive tax. But still, it, it's embarrassing, you know, to say the least. Um, Lisa, can you speak to that? Yeah, so, um, and this is also referring to um, development, because one of the other arguments is that if we do this, then, you know, people won't develop in Chicago, businesses will leave Chicago, which is not true. Um, a couple of places, so San Francisco, after they passed theirs, um, they did it three three times in a row. So they had three successive successive um, increases to their um, real estate transfer tax, and they only saw a continued increase in building. New York also increased their um, rent, and again they continued to build. So other places who have you know this um, these ordinances. Uh, there, you know, it's not having the impact that um, people think. Because I think when you think of it as a property tax, it seems like it's often. But if you think about, it's only when you sell your house. Like, how many buildings 
are being sold in a given year. Not all of downtown is going to, you know, be ha changing hands in any given year. They go decades between, you know, being sold. So, um, so there's, it's just not going to have the impact in terms of like landlords raising rent. I think the calculation was that the impact would be like a dollar, if anything. Um, so I don't have the exact numbers of how much they're spending in other places, but it's, it's way more than us and it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So Danieli, uh, who's a comrade from, a, a, I forget where you teach, brother, but he's also in Local 1600. He says, we should ask two questions. Would you like to help the folks off the streets? Would you like your taxes to go down? Excellent, excellent. And Aja, I don't know if you want to speak your question, but she wants to know, or they want to know, how much will the tax be? Do you, do you mean like in terms of revenue, or do you mean what, what the tax will be for the property sellers? I think it's a reasonable question that if we were to talk to people about this, they would want to know, like, what's the tax going to be levied on people who are selling these properties? Because that would give people perhaps a better estimation of how much it could generate. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. Okay. So there's a, let me put the fact sheet back in the chat. So, cause you can print this off, you give it to people um, and I will tell you also. Um, so basically the current rate Everybody pays the same, which is 0.75%. So whether your house is 200,000 or 5 million, everybody's paying the same rate. So this is a marginal rate increase, which means if your building is a million and one, you're not paying the increased rate on all of it. You're just paying the increased rate on that $1. So um, so for properties that are over a million, um, the marginal rate will be 2%. It will go up 2%. And over, um, and then over uh, 5 million is 3%. So everybody else will go down to 0.6. So it will go from 0.75% to 0.6%. So, um, that's how the actual numbers will change, which means 93% of houses that are sold in any given year will go down. Their sales tax will go down. And this will bring in about $100 million a year. So obviously it's gonna take a minute for this to get into effect, but, um, but it should bring in about 100 million annually. So, and uh, there's a little diagram on the fact sheet that helps kind of break it down. And uh, thank you, Joy. She just posted, oh my gosh, I love Chicago, but this is embarrassing. Look at New York spends 2.7 billion. Los Angeles, what is that? Point whatever billion. And then Chicago, <laughs> you know, like Lord have mercy. Hey, Troy, I'm spotlighting you because Morgan asked a really important question and she wants to know, if um if there is language in the ordinance that deals with uh students no i mean i don't think the actual language um directly uh addresses students but you know i think all of us know that it does <laughs> right um in 2019 there was a study from the city colleges of chicago that was really um kind of astounding really that it found that um city college students roughly 40 percent of them in this survey deal with some kind of housing insecurity. And I think all of us know of students who have to make choices between buying books and, you know, paying rent and, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting food and affording, you know, bus fare and people living in cars in order um, to afford to, uh, to take classes. And so um, it's a really easy jump for us and for CPS students. There's, um, and I don't have the numbers on this, but I know there's, you know, significant portions of students attending CPS that are housing insecure or, um, you know, living in, in, um, you know, out of cars with family members. And so it's, it's, it's really hard to learn when you're in those kind of situations. And that's why, you know, we've, um, you know, stepped up to endorse this and are doing events like this as a union. And I, I also think just while I'm going, I think it's not a stretch to think of our, of many of our colleagues and even um, fellow union members, especially um, adjunct faculty members who are often living, yes. you know, on a, on a knife's edge, um, to to make their rent and to, and to make a go of it. And so um, part-time professionals, you know, a, across um, our union, even, even with good union negotiated jobs, um, people are often in very difficult positions. And just, 
um, even even in general, people selling homes in the city, um, this will be savings um, to those members. So I think, you know, in terms of our role, just the kind of raw politics of it, um, this impacts students, it impacts our members. Um, a new revenue stream to the, the city of Chicago helps ease pressures on other revenue streams. So whether it's um, CTA or, um, you know, other, other lines of uh, services that, you know, garbage collection, you name it, right? Um, easing, um, having more resources on homelessness helps those other things that indirectly impact our colleges and our students. And so we have, um, I think, some self-interest in this. And just one more point, um, you know, we are part of a coalition that got Brandon Johnson into City Hall. Here, here. This is not something that happened um, in one election. Like We've been part of this for over 15 years, um, building strength and fighting. And this this proposal is not a new proposal. Like this is a proposal that has been part of our core mission um, all the way along. And so this is us saying to our union par partners, including CTU, but including neighborhood organizations that are out there with with folks like Tim Noonan who who are on this call, mm -hmm. us saying us saying to them that Local 1600 as a political entity is committed to that mission and that we stand with you and that we will do our part to get this across the finish line. And so um, we are standing up to that commitment and we need our members to understand how important it is um, on the ground, but also um, to this broader coalition that we fight for. So here, here, I'll get off here. my soapbox with that. But no, I'm not, right. brother. I mean, you that that is beautifully said. And I think we need to keep saying it. Look, the only way unions are going to survive and me on my soapbox is if we unite to meet people's basic needs. We cannot be in silos anymore. We should be advocating for our students. We should be advocating for the homeless. This this should be done, period. You know, and so there are a lot of issues to fight for, but I, I, I'm in agreement 100%. Um, all right, uh, Lou, um, I'm going to put pin you, my friend. It's so good to see you. Uh, go ahead, Lou. Well, it's good to be seen. Um, what I what I raised my hand for earlier was basically a response to one of the questions earlier. The actual vote in city council, and Lisa was right. A lot of people just did not want to be counted on the measure, so they didn't weren't there. But the actual vote in city council was 32 in favor and 17 against. Mm. So not a lot of people, a few people. So 32 is still a significant majority, and we should celebrate that. And I, I also want to just thank uh, uh, Brother Swanson for his... Uh, his comments, which I think were right to the mark, as you said. Here, here. Truth. And, you know, I think, too, I mean, the reason that the reason city council is doing anything at all is because we have Brandon Johnson in office. Think about how many committees Lori Lightfoot did not convene, did not listen, you know, and not just her, previous mayors, too. So we have this opportunity now and to keep growing these initiatives. This is a beginning. Let's keep it going. We need to be people of vision. And, and, I, and I know we can do it. I know we can do it. Um, who is up next? I believe Tim. Let me let me find yeah. you, brother, and let me spotlight you, my friend, because because you are so cute. Let's get you. <laughs> I mean that in the most loving way. Tim and I, Tim and I do a lot of good solidarity. You know, brother, you know it. Your wife is gonna get you later. I'm just kidding. Um, go ahead, Tim. You, you turned me all red before I go on camera. Um, <laughs> uh, we well, know a lot of things. What, what a lot of people aren't describing and aren't accounting for. And, and and it's a difficult number to come by. Is what is the cost of homelessness now? I mean, people are going to the emergency room. People are coming. They're they're picking people up off the streets. They're they're having mental crisis issues that need to be responded to. Now, if people had homes that the, these mental uh, uh, crisis, mental health issues can be addressed at a home, it's really difficult to do it on the street. And then there's the other aspect of, which is a hard to put a number on, is what is the the contribution that these people who are currently living on the streets are going to affect our city and, and, and our world? You know, because these, these people are living on the street and it, you know, and if not for the grace of God, we'd be there ourselves. But but these pe the people are going to uh, are going to be productive citizens. So if you are a productive citizen, 
you're going to contribute significantly more, which makes the amount of money that's being spent on this to be minimalized. It'd be nearly nothing compared to what the contributions are going to be done. So that's here, here. I, I think that's a brilliant thing to say. Um, and I, you know, what kind of city do you want to live in? And I, I really think you you nailed it. You really did. So I'm sorry, I'm messing around with the with the settings. Howard, I'm um, gonna spotlight you, brother. Go go ahead and uh, or I'm trying to bro, go ahead, brother. Go go ahead and raise your question, Howard. You gotta unmute, brother. Yeah, it's a a suggestion and question. So uh, most people in Chicago don't even know there's an election March 19th. That's number one. Uh, number two is we know uh, that the real estate association in the city and state is relatively stronger than any place in the country. That's why we have a law banning rent control. Uh, number three is that uh, those real estate Mongols and their new corporations that they brought in to <clears throat> push out more African-Americans than any city in the country uh, are going to flood of uh, this city with TV commercials and stuff, stuff in the post office boxes of our mailboxes. So I think the idea that you raised, Tezu, of people making one to two minute videos, you can do that on your phone, uh, you can do that on your computer, it's all built in, doesn't matter what kind of system you have. That's gonna be really a powerful way to get to people. Um, and then the other way is just really going door to door. So we have the example of janitors for justice over 25 years ago, where their union members, uh, potential union members, went back into their own communities uh, and did the door-to-door -door work to win those struggles in Houston and Los Angeles. So I don't know if that's something that 1600 has really um, gotten to yet, but that would be a suggestion for just take the zip codes of where everybody lives and get everybody together and go out door-to-door. -door. Yeah, we, we uh, in fact, uh, yes, for sure. Um, I'm sorry, I gotta quit messing with this thing. Okay, let me let me do this again. That definitely we have a lot of canvassing opportunities, phone banking, texting, you name it. But I, I agree with Howard. Um, you know, and not to throw shade on, on other things because I do believe that hey, yo, by any means necessary. But I do think that when I had the opportunity to talk to people, whether it was on the phone or or um, you know, face to face or what have you, that it, it had an impact, you know, but it matters. You may think that leaving a message is not going to have an impact, but it will. The text messages had an impact during the Johnson campaign. And, and I called hundreds and hundreds of people, you know, uh, and uh, and it's also, you know, it's just beautiful to do. But I also didn't just stick to the line either. Um, I, I, made, I made it a point to also talk to people at church, to talk to people at the grocery store. Um, when when I was helping to organize the youth, we, we passed out stickers all over the place. And that's why I'm a sticker fan, because young people are very creative when it comes to these things, you know. They put them in places I didn't even think about, like, you know, the, the subway, you know, lampposts, places like that. So I, I think we could definitely, you know, use all that creativity to to really educate people in, in many different ways. Uh, and this is just, again, you know, this is a very great event, and I appreciate everybody for being here. But you got to spread the word. You got to spread that vision of what could be and educate people. Be bold. We have to be bold. You know, um, because we can win. This. I, Go ahead. I was going to give one. I know folks wanted talking points. I think is a great idea. Can you hear me? I seem to be. Yes, you're good. You're good. You're a little laggy, but you're good. Okay. okay. So I think one of the most important or impactful um, images you can put in people's heads is that um, basically one in four CPS students is housing insecure or has, or has experienced homelessness. So it's about 14,000 students in CPS experiencing homelessness or housing insecurity. So, um, you know, it, it, whenever people bring up, you know, oh, we're going to have developers making less money, you know, just bring up the fact of like, so are you for homeless children? I mean, it, it's simple fact, like we could create this revenue stream and create more stable housing situations for children in CPS, or we could worry about the bottom line of these big corporations who can afford buildings over a million. It's, it's a pretty stark comparison. I don't think anybody would argue that children you know, don't deserve homes. So yeah, it's about 14,000 um, students struggling with, with home, home housing, house insecurity. 
So Don raised a really excellent question. Is can CCC hold informational events for students on this ordinance? Absolutely. In fact, I offer double extra credit. I don't think I see any of my students though, but I'm gonna share the recording. Feel free to share. Um, it is a nonpartisan effort, so you can also table at your colleges. I plan to table next week. I, I've been passing out flyers, hitting the, you know, um, and I really would love to go to your colleges too. So if that's possible, let me know. Um, afternoons are good for me. But absolutely, the students are also in the campaigns now. They are telling me, you know, that they want to help also support at Harold Washington. And and they're they're fearless. They're speaking truth to power in in um in in just I love that. I love that. Um I've been talking about this in my classrooms because it is relevant. All my classes. I mean, come on now, who doesn't this impact? You know, and I believe that you can speak about this issue and, and gain their support. I, I did post a, a thing about a house party. And if the youth, you know, probably like to come hang out, we're going to have halal food, uh, vegan options. I'm going to make sure that there's a uh, crudites for people who can't handle flour or whatever that disease is called, celiac disease. But we're going to have tequila because tequila is my lady. But invite them to these events. They can come. The only thing is I'm going to have somebody garden the drink so underage people don't drink. But they're excited about this house party. It's a great opportunity for them to learn and, and also explain why they're why they're invested in this this work, which is so important. Um very good. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, Don. Yes. Spread it. Yes. I think so. I think doing this kind of event would be brilliant. Having Lisa back, having a speaker come and talk to them. And, you know, and, and the students are generous. You know, they give up their time. They give up whatever little coin they have because this is important to them, you know? So absolutely. Okay. Um, any other questions or anybody want to make another another comment? Right. I was just wondering, can uh, we invite the heads of the student councils at each campus to the event next week at uh, the union? Because uh, absolutely, I, I already have. Absolutely, they are welcome. Are in contact. But you know what, Don? Do me a favor, text me, brother, and I'll be sure. Because I, I just knows, I just Humphreys. Um, I've talked to the dean of students. They're aware. I, I've been talking boldly, talking to the administration. And I gotta give props to the administrators because they are they are backing this initiative. They get the importance. You know, I know a lot of times we, you know, we have a position with the administration, but overwhelmingly, at least at our college, they want to support. And I'm inviting them to our party, but the students as well. Uh, I just happen to be very blessed to have student government um students in, in my classes and and they've been promoting the good word for us. But yeah, I don't see why we can't do that because the directors of student activities are our union members. So I think it's fair to be able to spread this around, absolutely, and to maybe have a joint effort uh, like this again. You know, I mean, look at we're we're at seven seven fourteen with this beautiful, vibrant conversation. There's no reason reason we can't replicate it for free again. Uh, uh I think it's Joyce. Joyce, good. Go ahead, sister. Hi, hi. How are you, sister? <laughs> good to uh, see your beautiful face. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh. I, I wanted to say, um, I'm trying to think of what I wanted to say. Uh, Take your time. Take your time. Uh, the 35th, the 39th, and the 33rd wards are involved in going door to door. And if you uh, connect with working families, is mostly behind it. And if you want to connect with a group that's doing it already and supplying uh, flyers, and information, that's where you go. And I'll try to post something for everyone to see. Please do. You all been doing a yeoman's job, yeoman's, your other's job of posting where you're canvassing. I know the, you know, Byron's my brother from another mother. I know the uh, 18th is also doing a great job. Um, I may be the lonely voice in the wilderness on 11, but, you know, this is a Nicole Lee's territory, so machine candidate. Um, but, you know, we can we can work around that. Um, okay, very good. I'm seeing some good research. I want to ask this question. Please, please go ahead, Joyce. On the ordinance, uh, do they say, you know, there's a revenue, uh, dedicated revenue that's going to be accrued, but do they mention who, what committee or what, how it's going to be uh uh, handled by the city council? Uh, is that something that will follow or is there any indication of a committee that will 
work with it? Yes, or yes. That's an excellent question. We had answered it before you came in, Joyce. Go ahead, Lisa. I think it's worth repeating. So there will be a community council that will oversee to make sure that the funding is one being spent where it was meant to be spent and for two it, that it's being effective so they'll be able to look at the impact over time collect data and then adjust as um, as they go forward and the three funding the main funding buckets are affordable housing wraparound services and rental assistance excellent yeah yeah Will the mayor have any, uh, uh, he, will his hand be able to work in it in any way? If Will he be in charge in any way? No, I mean, it's really like once the ordinance passes, it's just the law they have to follow. And the, the council will, you know, the board will oversee its execution. Um, and so, I mean, you know, he, he won't be able to influence any other, you know, any differently than he could influence any other law, basically, for ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Asu. Hey, Joyce, it's my pleasure, and I'm always so happy to see you, sister, because you you bring you you light some you you shine some light on some important points. So I really appreciate you. So, um, this is uh the time, the time, the time. I believe. Look at how beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm buying your friends. We are at 717, 718. This has been such a wonderful event, and I just want to thank you all. But this is a time, you know, money is a political question. Without money, campaigns cannot succeed. And we know the opposition has raised a million dollars to spread their lies, misinform, confuse, and really defeat an ordinance that could help so many people have, as we've explained. Um, and so we can't allow them to win. There there are more of us and there are them, we can win it. And so I, I am going to ask if you can donate any amount. Uh, I commit, oh, my husband's on this call. <laughs> I love you, Aaron. I commit to $50 for this cause besides giving up time and you know my cooking talents and all that, $50. But uh, would anybody else be able to donate perhaps $500? to make this campaign a success. Anybody willing to donate 500, you can do it in payments. We're not gonna say no. My union president who I love uh, already donated 500. So thank you, brother. Can anybody commit to donating, let's take it down a notch, uh, $250 to bring Chicago home. And the money would be used for advertising, for YouTube ads, for Hulu ads, you know, to motivate those young people to vote, to inform the public of what is really at stake, to offer them a vision of a better Chicago where the houseless have warm, dignified homes where people can afford rent. Uh, can anybody donate two hundred dollars? I'll give two hundred. Um, and I gave two hundred Monday, so I'm up to four hundred. So. John, God bless you, brother. May you live an abundant life. Thank you. Thank you. A blessed okay. retiree, so. Hey, hey, live the dream, brother. You're my hero. You're my hero. Thank you. Thank you for that generous contribution. Anybody else want to match Don's $200? Come on now. He's donating four. Aaron, I'm not going to say the no. The link, oh, the yes. link is in the chat. If you're if you're ready to do it now, there's a link in the chat. You can pay on payday. I, I'm going to pay on, on Friday. So, Antonio, if you're in the call, my son, if you want to donate some coin, I'm not going to say no. Or Aaron, my husband, not to put you on the spot. All right, can anybody donate one hundred dollars? One hundred dollars to house our students, potentially to offer the mental health wraparound services that people need. One hundred dollars. Hey, Zoo, I did. I uh, donated on Monday, and I just donated again. Tim, this is why you are my Irish brother from another mother. <laughs> And we got to celebrate our generous ways. Brother, thank you so much. I, I applaud you and I love you, truly. Thank you. Thank Money you. well spent. <laughs> Absolutely. Yo, think about it. $100 is about eight cups of coffee, right? So maybe maybe five, six packs. I don't know, you know. Uh, Troy Swanson, the most amazing legislative chair, is going to donate $100. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your generosity. All right, can anybody donate $50? And match Hesu, anybody, can you donate $50? Uh, 
Um, Hesu, I think you had offered generously to pay me that much out of your pocket. Let's just donate it. Let's just donate that to, to the cause. All right. So, <laughs> oh, to call me out like that. Yes, I was going to give him a very small honorarium. Uh, I will gladly donate $100, comrade. Thank you. Thank you. That, yo, right here, right here, truly. Aja, we'll donate a few coins. Hey, any amount, Aja, appreciate it. All right. Can anybody donate $25? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five. Danieli, orale, compañero. Danieli putting in fifty dollars. Excellent. Thank you, Danieli. Henry putting in fifty dollars. Thank you, Henry. Juan, help me shout out these people. Morgan, fifty dollars. All right, represent Cook County College Teachers Union. Look at that. Look what we can do together. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Anybody else for fifty dollars? Oh man, this is the best fundraiser. This is the most successful fundraiser I've ever done. Woo, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, 1600 represent. All right, can anybody donate $25, which is really like a, mov a movie, a movie visit, perhaps, you know, a, a meal. $50, I mean, 25. Julie, thank you, Julie, for 25. Anybody else? $25. I hope somebody's keeping track. Don, do the math for me so then we can do a huge shout out. And then uh, I know I'm going to forget, but I, I do want to take one beautiful group picture. Um, anybody else for 25? What about 10? No amount is too small. Can anybody donate $10? $10 going once. That is a cup of coffee. $10. How about uh, $5? Five dollars. That's just a black coffee with no cream and sugar right there. Right. Five dollars. Any other amount? I'm not going to say no. This is all beautiful. Well, listen. For reals, man, I'm going to start crying. This this is just amazing. Um, I, I, I uh, am so grateful for your generosity. I know economic times are hard. And I'm just so grateful. Tony, Tony, you got your hand up. Go ahead, Tony. And I'm going yeah, um, to do a screenshot of everybody. I apologize. Let me, let me just uh, want to uh, obviously very proud of all the 1600 members who, who have donated. Um, please reach out to your family and your neighbors and your community, your faith organizations uh, on this important issue. And really, you know, I'm, we're, we're asking for money because money is important. We need to get this uh, issue out. Um, and that costs money as far as ads. Um, and everyone knows that. But even more vital is to get people out, our members to vote on March 19th. Um, you know, a lot of people just kind of gloss over the referendums and, and don't even think about it. We need to point them to that. Um, and uh, Lisa can, can correct me if I'm wrong, but usually they are the first thing that you see. And yeah. so um, you know, we need to let people know that when they see that referendum on Bring Chicago Home, um, and uh, it may not... Uh, um it's been it's been a few minutes since i've looked at the actual language i i don't think bring chicago home is actually in the 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 language but they need to look for the you know the real estate transfer tax and so um and and to 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 vote yes um and of course there is may there are mail in options that are going to be available i think starting tomorrow there's going to be early voting starting very soon. Um, and so it, it'll be very easy. People, um, we've made it very easy to, to vote in Illinois. So um, people can, can, can do it any, the easiest way that it's, it's available to them. So um, apart from, you know, the, the money donations, which are important, and we would ask you to reach out to other folks to, to ask them to make a donation, but to get out and vote and to canvas and phone bank. And um, 
Troy Swanson uh, is the contact person for 1600. He can let you know what, where, when and where those uh, opportunities are available. And of course, you've got the, the Bring Chicago Home website as well. Troy, take it away, comrade. Sorry, okay. Um, and I just put my email address uh, in the chat for people to reach out to me. So, um, you know, this is a big um, election season, right? Uh, we are working in a few different areas and we really need volunteers to make a difference. Um, we have uh, districts up north. Senate 20 is a pri is our is our priority for uh, Graciela Guzman. She is fantastic. And as mentioned earlier, we are um, also canvassing uh, with her for Bring Chicago Home. So if you knock on doors for her, we're also spreading the word about this vote. So please join us. But if you don't want to drive up north, um, we have some districts in the south. Um, House 31, House 32, Lisa Davis, Michael Crawford, we are knocking on doors. And even far south, um, we're doing some work for Rick Ryan down on House 36. Earlier in the chat, Tim Noonan mentioned that he wished he lived on the north side so he could vote for Graciela. Well, let me tell you, even if you can't vote for her, uh, even if you're not one of our union members, we would be happy to have you knock on doors for Graciela. And sometimes Southside people don't know this, but if you get on the Dan Ryan and you go north, it becomes the Kennedy. You just keep going. And then you're on the Kennedy. You don't even have to think about it. And if you see Montrose Avenue, get off on Montrose, go a few blocks east. That's where we're out of. It's easy. And on a Saturday morning, there's no traffic. You'll be there in 25 minutes. You won't even know it. And so join us. Um, we could use the help, spread the word. Um, we are going to tip the balance. Um, we often are in the position of being outspent, but somehow we still win because we are knocking on doors. We're making a difference. And that's what really matters. So um, email me. I can send you all of our priority um, canvassing work. Obviously, if you want to work directly with Bring Chicago Home, bringchicagohome.org, you can sign up. I'm sure they have neighborhood work going on where you can go right down the street from wherever you live um, to knock on doors. We would love to have you join us if possible, but um, get out and make a difference um, this spring. Uh, it really, really does um, make a difference. And, and let me tell you, I've canvassed a lot in February. This is the best February we've had in a long time to be knocking on doors. There is no snow. It is warm. Take advantage. Feel good. Make a difference. So um, thank you. Thank you for that, everybody. All right. I, I said I'm going to testify. You, you see, I'm, I'm a little plump because of the pandemic. When I canvassed for uh, Tony, I mean, for uh, Brandon, I lost 15 pounds. So not only are you doing something worthy, you shot this little girl in my daughter's peanut gallery. It's good for your health and it's good for growing allegedly your brain cells if you walk more than a mile a day. So just putting it out there, comrades, I think. Hey, I, I do want to, before we go on and do our final song, I, I do want to do one more appeal. If anybody can donate, thank you, Joy, for the $5. Thank you, Joy, for the 50 If anybody wants to contribute, you know, um, at least copy the link down, spread it on your social media. Let's win this. We can do it. We can do it together and um, couldn't be prouder and happier about how this uh, first town hall has gone for the spring. There will be others. Uh, can can you on camera so I can do a group shot? Uh, Juan, I don't know if you can do a screenshot in case I flub it up, but I sure would love to to just get all your beautiful faces. Um, I think it's important that we also record, you know, how, how wonderfully this all went besides the recording. I will have that cut and send to all the participants. Dude, I think I messed it up already. But all right, all right. All right, so we are going, listen, thank you all again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Myron. Thank you, staffers. Thank you, Juan. Everybody who asked questions and participated. I couldn't be prouder of my local Cook County College Teachers Union Local 1600. Let's keep it going and growing. And we are going to end with uh, Adam. Uh, just, just beautiful. Get it, brother. All right, one more song for those who stay. Uh... Thank you all for this conversation. I'm feeling really energized right now. I want to bring this conversation into other spaces and do what I can to get out the boat with y'all this season. All right, here we go. It's getting harder to make that rent, but don't worry, baby, I got us a tent. Let's go. 
Baby, don't you wanna go Back to that same old place That's my sweet home, Chicago They built a brand new luxury spot In Weiss Hospital's parking lot Fuck that Baby, don't you wanna go there Cause it ain't for you and me no more Sweet home, Chicago They're turning Cabrini into new condos Well, don't they look pretty in that freezing snow? Come on Baby, don't you wanna go there? Cause there's thousands of folks out here Who need a sweet home, Chicago Developers have their way They'll make a city where only millionaires stay Come on Where the hell are we supposed to go now? We ain't going on This will always be sweet home Chicago Oh, When this battle's finally won It's gonna be for all of us or none Let's go Baby, don't you want to go now? Now let's get out of the boat, it's time to bring on Chicago! <laughs> I'm in. Thank you. All right. Well, listen, this has been amazing. Thank you, everybody. I'll send out the, the recording. I'm going to email it out to everybody. But want to thank you once again. I also have to go to a uh, a meeting now. But thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's win it. Let's win it together. Come to our house party next week. Halal, vegan options. I'm going to have tequila. You know, appetizers. It's going to be a great time. Come on over to 1901 West Carroll. Bring your friends. All right. Have an amazing day, everybody. Thanks, hey, Sue. Good work. Good hey, work, everyone. Thank you, comrades. Thank you all. Thank you all. Much appreciation. Peace.